Hey guys, Len here, and I am with my beautiful daughter, Chloe. And what we have behind us is a 30 gallon aquarium that we have had in our family for, I mean, how tall were you? This tall? This tall? I think since Chloe was about six or seven years old. In fact, um, I'll just show you this clip from um, some of our older episodes from a different YouTube channel when we used to film in front of this aquarium. Uh, when we first set it up with a really cool fresh water setup. And we've been running fresh water in this tank for, for a long, long time. And I've always wanted a salt water tank and I've been afraid because I know it's a lot of work. I know it takes a great deal of care as compared to fresh water. So um, we're, we've decided to take the plunge. We've kind of waited about a year for um, almost all of our fish to die off. We didn't have a, um, a tank crash or anything like that per se, um, but we just decided that we wouldn't replace fish as they were dying. And so now here we are. We took this and power washed it, got everything out of it, and we have turned it over and we have put um, a new saltwater substrate as well as live rock and we have a really beautiful combination of this nice purple stuff and uh, as well as like the gray white and so we're making this because this is going to be a long journey we figure we're probably four to six weeks away from introducing any wet pets to this environment so um, what I want to do is just kind of document our journey and so step one is basically for us to start adding water to the tank. We have it set up and we didn't really get that on camera but you can see it behind us here and we'll take some b-roll for you to take a look at and enjoy as well. So um, Chloe actually works at a huge in a huge pet department in a uh, small hardware store and they're really known for their um, the quality of the fish that they raise there. And um, so Chloe has been working with fish for what? Three years? And just over like the last year has really gotten into the salt water aspect of things. So what I wanna have Chloe do is talk a little bit about the importance of the kind of substrate that we have, as well as the live rock and why it takes so long before you can introduce wildlife, wet pets, into the saltwater aquarium. Well, mainly the importance of live rock is, well, one, obviously giving them a place to hide, feel comfortable in, in their natural environment. Um, it's really good for building up that beneficial bacteria. It's going to be the main holder of all that bacteria. There's a reason that rock in a set up fully filtered aquarium is called live rock because it's literally alive with bacteria and enzymes and all that good stuff that'll keep the tank running keep it healthy and and it's a big thing for filtration again with having all of that bacteria on it it'll be good to help keep the tank filtered mm -hmm. and just overall the way it's shaped and formed it's great for a lot of specific saltwater fish that like really tight hiding spots you can see all the holes and the cracks and crevices in it are perfect for snails hermit crabs blennies wrasse all those different sorts of fish and invertebrates that like to hide so we're gonna start adding water to this we do have what's called RO water RO is of course reverse osmosis so tell, talk for just a minute about reverse osmosis water and what's different about it than tap water. Mm -hmm. So while the main difference in RO water, while I'm not, I don't know the scientific specifics of it, RO water is pretty much a water without any sort of bacteria, minerals, particulates, anything in it. It is no impurities. Nothing in it. Whether good, whether good stuff or bad, it is completely clean of anything and everything that could potentially be in any kind of water. Right, and, and we live in an area where not only do we have all of those things that are common to tap water, but we also have forever chemicals like PTFEs that cause us to have to filter our water for drinking. So, um, so with all of those factors in mind, we simply decided that this was the best way to just start off on the right foot. We are sitting on... All right, so now that we have the tank full, it is time to add the reef crystal salt. And I kind of have this sped up for time's sake, but you can see that 
the salt goes in sort of like a, <laughs> a snow globe. So you can buy water that is pre-mixed to the exact salinity that you need. And so um, if you look on the right side of the tank, you'll see that that is the, the power head of the filter. We have a submersible canister style filter. And what we chose to do is to take the filter part off of it so that we're still getting the flow uh, that the power head gives, but we don't want to do any filtration at this point. One, because we, I believe that it will help to circulate the salt. And by the way, you need a half cup of salt per gallon of RO water. So with this 30 gallon tank, we needed 15 cups. And so right now the salt is being added and circulated through the tank. So next we're putting in this water conditioner and this is probably not as necessary because we are using RO water, but nonetheless, we want the wet pets that we're putting in there to have the best start possible. And this is a refractometer. We're gonna check salinity with this. We want it to be at 0.023 to 0.026. Ideally, put a drop there on the prism and you're gonna close the top glass over the prism, check it in the light and it is spot on. So here it is all filled up two days later with uh, the water nice and clear. And so we will continue to monitor ammonias, nitrates, nitrites, and salinity before we add pets. And we will keep the canister filter off so we don't filter any beneficial bacteria out of the water. And we will of course keep the lights off so we don't encourage algae growth. So I hope you found this entertaining and helpful and I hope you'll continue to follow our progress as we introduce pets, uh, fish, coral, and the like. So if you haven't subscribed, I hope today is the day we earn your subscription.